to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, quite simply, the best fishing show on YouTube. Now here's a guy that's not exactly stupid, is he? Look at this guy. He's in a boat. Hmm, I like a bit of boat fishing myself. So what I've done, does he look like Mr. Crabtree or is it me? He does a bit, doesn't he? What I've done, made a few phone calls from somebody we met at the London Boat Show, on the Polar Craft stand where they do the aluminium fishing boats, and I'm going up on the Thames tomorrow. See if I can have a go on their boat. Yes, I'm going to try and sneak a fishing rod in there if I can. It is a totally awesome fishing show, don't forget. We've got to get fishing in there as well as boating. Quite what we do, I don't know. Bad forecast. <sighs> River's a bit flooded. Well, what can we do? Actually, it's not as flooded as this guy, look. I mean, the water around his boat is really coloured. Anyway, off we go. Mr Crabtree, would you like to come as well? He's as deaf as me. <laughs> Right. Introducing the, the 14 foot Polar Craft V hull. One of our most popular models for fishing. Uh, she has got all the benefits of our flat bottom punts that we've introduced you to before, but combine that with a V hull gives you a lot more maneuverability in the water. She performs forms a lot better in rough conditions, but you've still got the stand up fishing performance of a, of a flat bottom boat. Uh, this one will take three people. She's still lightweight, she only weighs 90, 90 kilograms, which is a comfortable lift for two people. It still means that she's car toppable if you've got a, a big enough roof rack to take her. This one we fitted with some cushions for comfort, uh, as opposed to the normal standard aluminium. I've also put some rod holders in here for you, Graham, so that you can go out and do a bit of fishing in this one today. Uh, we've combined this with a four horsepower Yamaha. She will take up to a 15, so if you want to do a bit of bit of bit of light light estuarine fishing for bass or something like that, you can put a bigger motor on there. But to get up to the the good marks on the river here, the four horsepower Yamaha is more power than you'll ever need. Here at Lyndon Lewis Marine in Shepparton, we're fortunate enough to be on one of the best fishing stretches on the Thames. We've got fantastic pike fishing this season. We've already had a number of pike out over 30 pounds. A huge number of 20 pounders have come out. We've had perch up to four pounds this season, um, some really good barbel, carp over 20, 25. So it's one of the best all-round fishing, fishing stretches. We've got fast water, we've got nice deep slow marks, we've got shallow weedy marks, we've got a lot of structure both from trees coming into the water as well as submerged structure, some good rocky outcrops where you can always find an, a bully of good, good perch hanging out. So. We've got a real mixed bag of fishing here and you can employ a lot of different techniques. This season with the high water, the most successful techniques for big, big pike have been live baits and dead baits. But it is one of the best years that we've had in a long time for fly fishing with a lot of good jack pike coming out in six to eight pound range. Um, so very good on the, the, the spinning as well. We've even had a couple of zander up this season. Shepparton Weir particularly holds some good pike. That's where the big ones, the 30 pounders, have been coming out this year. And to be honest, to get to the best marks there, you do need a boat. And this style of boat is perfect. The V-shaped hull can get you through the fast water right up to the weir, where you can bounce your rubbers and your live baits off the face and sink it down to where the big, big, big pike and where the big zander are waiting. This boat, as I mentioned earlier, will take up to three anglers, but really it's most comfortable with two. The seats are nicely positioned so that you can fish 360 degrees around, around the boat. You've got anchor points fore and aft so that you can tie up almost anywhere, anywhere in the river and fish. She's also good for drifting along those deep slow banks, getting to the fish that are tight up on the structure. At Lyndon Lewis Marine we have our own trim shop so we can custom make seats, bimini covers, any kind of shelter that you want so we can custom make that for your fishing needs. We can see an example of that here. We've also fitted some rod holders on this one. And again, we can put on different style of rod holders and we can put them where you want, mounted the way that you want. Again, for your individual fishing requirements. On this particular one, we fitted a Garmin fish finder unit. This is a portable unit with a self-contained battery and you can put any of the Garmin range of fish finders on here. In this case, I've gone with one of the one of the, the basic ones, just in black and black and white, with a 
stick-on transducer that simply clips onto the hull on the outside here and just attaches with a suction cup. So it's easily removable for safety and security. You've got nothing built in. You can just pack that up into a self-contained bag and carry it away when you're finished with your fishing. What this unit is going to do for you, this will enable you to find the structure. Pike, perch and a lot of other fish are structure bound, bound fish and if you can find the deeper holes, the underlying underlying structures, you'll be able to find, find fish. In the fast current, the best barbell are going to be lying in the holes and if you can find those, you're going to be onto the fish. If you can find the submerged rock piles and pylons, if you can find the sunken logs, you're going to find good perch and pike. And you can plumb for hours trying to do that or you can do it with your fish finder. It'll also tell you what type of bottom you're fishing on. So you can find the, those gravel patches in amongst the sediment. That, that's where you're gonna find your big carp. And it's a really useful tool that means that you can get onto the fish a lot quicker and make the most of your limited fishing time. Polarcraft UK are boat partners with Yamaha. So we've got a, a lovely little four horsepower power plant on here. One of the most reliable lightweight engines on the market starts first time every time simply put it into the starting position make sure your kill switch is in place it'll take a liter of fuel you can you can have an external fuel source onto here we can supply those in 10 liters 25 liters whatever size you want but for the average fishing on the on the Thames your one liter fuel inbuilt fuel tank is gonna gonna last you most of the day and simply carry a reserve container with you. A small consideration for safety, always ensure that your kill switch is in place. What this does, if this is attached to you when you're fishing, if you're motoring along and you happen to, to fall out of the boat, this just pulls off, the boat motor cuts automatically. So it means not only have you got a boat that's not moving away from you, you can get back into your boat, but your boat isn't going to circle around and come over you with the propeller still running. So it's a very important safe safety feature and please always ensure that you have that attached to your body and onto the engine when you're out fishing. Last of all, I just want to mention the single most important piece of equipment you'll be have, using today, Graham. That's your life jacket. Although this stretch of the Thames looks placid, it's an incredibly dangerous piece of, piece of water. Automatically inflating life jackets. The moment you go into the, into the water, your life jacket will deploy, it'll burst out here. You have got a pull, pull ring to inflate it as well, so you can, you can just pull that toggle and your life jacket will pop out like an airbag. It's a true life jacket, so as long as this is, you're wearing this properly, even if you're face down unconscious in the water, it will turn you over and keep your, your airway clear of the water. Now, I know you want to go fishing, so why don't I go inside and run you through some of the best marks in the area. Right, what I've done is I've just pulled up Google Earth here, just to give you a satellite pit view of the river, so I can point out some of the best marks. We're over here, Lyndon Lewis Marine is at the, at the slipway. Now, all of this lovely water along here, you can't access from the shore. The only place where you can fish from the shore is a tiny piece there with a lock permit, and a little piece of public access water just along here. So the best swims, the public can't get anywhere near from the shore, but anybody with a boat can access these. The river splits over here and goes over a couple of different weirs with a lovely long sweeping turn. There's a number of permanently moored, moored boats and posts in the river and you've got feeder streams coming in in a couple of different places and the river way coming in as well. You've then got a long stretch of shallower water along here and a series of islands. So a lot of different interest, interesting water to choose from, different structures, allowing you to target different species or choose different waters to suit your conditions. This year, the biggest fish have been coming out on or below the weir. So this is where those 30 pound pike came out that I was telling you about but we've got a number of good, good, good fish in the, in the deeper swims along here. You've got a lovely slow bend just past, past the canoe club, which you'll notice you've got a deep bank with some nice overhanging trees. This is a good spot for catching big fish that are lying tight in on that bank, keeping out of the current 
and a live bait or dead bait drifted past their noses will often suck one of those big fish out off the edge. And for your spinning, you've got some lovely structure to target a number of permanently moored boats along here on both sides of the, of the river, particularly this one here just above the, the weir, which is known to harbour a good 25-pounder. In terms of barbel swims, we've got one of the best barbel swims in the country at Shepparton Weir here. We don't get that many fish. It's not prolific in numbers, but it's big fish. I've never had a barbel there out under eight pounds before, and my personal best is 13. I've also recently had a 25 pound carp out just on that weir. There's a large area below the, the first weir that you'll come to, which in the morning you'll find hundreds of bream wallowing on the surface and, and breaching, uh, which is quite exciting in the summer. So if you're ever looking for some good dustbin lids to come chase, it's one of the best places on the Thames locally. And the island eyed house here is well known historically for producing very big barbel in good numbers. We've got some great pike in this stretch of the river, but they're not stupid. You're going to have your work cut out for you going after them. It's not enough just to know where the good marks are. You're going to have to present them with the right bait, fished at the right depth, in the right manner, or if it's a lure, fished at the right speed. Really important just to get, 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 get the right, right style of lure to start with. Some good lures along the, the stretch of the river. Starting on the, on the, on the top, your shallow, shallow diving, diving lures. This time of year, big lures. You've got pre-spawn fish, the water's cold. You need a big mouthful to, get, to, to, to get, get the bigger pike going. Something like this, it's a lot of action. You can fish it slow near the, near the surface and create a fair bit of disturbance. In the summer, you can use your surface disturbing, disturbing lures like your crazy Charlies, Zara spooks, jitterbugs, but they're not as productive now during the winter. These are more to be fished in the shallow cabbage beds and you'll get a lot of exciting action on this type of lure at the right time. You're gonna probably be better off fishing your deep slow lures, countdown lures that enable you to fish consistently at a particular depth or to get right down tight onto that structure and lately, your soft rubber and silicone lures have really been producing the goods, uh, especially the weedless lures that you can really get down there and, and bump them on the nose with. Um, the old standby, the good old MEP spinner, you can never go wrong with these and you always want to have a couple of them in your box, but have some different sized blades so that you can fish them at different speeds. At the moment, dirty, slow, cold water, you're probably going to want big bladed spinners that you can really fish slow and are going to send out a lot of vibration to those pike. Basic checklist to go through, is she in neutral, your kill switch, put that in place, without that you can pull all day long and nothing is going to happen. Make sure your breather valve's open so you're not creating a vacuum, your engine won't cut out on you. Little, little bit, of, bit, bit of choke and give her a pull. Being a Yamaha, she'll start first time every time.
with the boat running smoothly, the first thing I saw was a wreck of another boat. Now that's not good for confidence. Had it been torpedoed? And then I saw another. Was somebody having a boat jumble? As I worked my way up river, all I could see was swim after swim that screamed out fish. It looked chubby, it looked breamy, it looked perchy. But alas, the River Thames was partly flooded and I only had a scant two hours to sample the boat. But I tell you what guys, it was a totally awesome looking piece of water. Well guys, I've come up the river, I've listened to uh, all the information that Etienne gave me and I'm going to be using, not having put a tripod in the boat, obviously in the boat on my own it's a disaster, regular lure outfit. I'm going to try soft baits first. Now I've made this one up on a sort of twitch bait rig. It's a sidewinder lure, rubber sidewinder lure. It's a sea fishing lure this one. Really red hot. It's my best bass colour. I don't want to lose it. I'm going to have a go here, see if we can't pick a fish up. It's drizzly, grizzly, grey. Not good for filming. Very, very good for fishing. So, give this chappy a little workout. Got a nice wiggly soft tail. And then I guess, I think, I'll probably work my way up to the weir pool and see what's up the weir pool. But it all looks very fishy and it does look a very affluent area. But with no success on the lures, I was soon up at the weir, as I had such a short time to use the boat and rods. Weir pools are dangerous, and on this day there was plenty of water coming over that weir sill. Always wear a life jacket. Everywhere I looked, there were potential predator swims. The stanchions of jetties, the hull of a riverboat, and if that boat has plenty of algal growth on its hull, it means it rarely gets moved. So that's where any predators should lurk. The sides of support walls, overhanging bushes, all these places hold fish. My goodness, I just can't wait to get back there in a boat and try it in the summer. To be honest, I'm quite fancy. I've always got good piking in weir pools where there's bubbles. Where all the foam comes and slows up there. And if you can just see that alongside the jetty, there's a whole line of bubbles. There's a whole line of foam there. And it's all boily and swirly up there and rushes. Way too much water coming down. But here, you can tell by the bubbles, there's a back eddy. It's actually going in a bit of a circle. And down here, I've just dropped the anchor just below the boat there. Wow, it's just a huge, out here, it's just a massive big eddy. Not in the swirly stuff over there, don't want that too fast. But here, right in front of me, it dies off, slicks off, and the bubbles are there. So, I think I'll go dead baiting. Oh, fish rose up there. Just a big fish rose, I've got to have a few throws. Got to have a few, th you know, they look like a big barbel, that one. Let's have some throws, see what we can do. Now, there's the fish going across the top of the screen there. I mean, 21 to 22 feet of water. So pretty deep, pretty deep. It says the water temperature here looks like six degrees centigrade and there's another fish coming on so good idea to use these garmin little sounders because not only does it tell me the depth but i mean i've basically read the water by looking at those bubbles on the surface but there we go another fish just marked on there down at 11 feet depth maybe 12 feet of depth i think i'm gonna add another one there i think if that's where the bait fish are i'm gonna start oh and another one as well i think i could uh, stop fishing and watch the screen all day Anyway, let's get a bait in the water, see if we can't find out if my watercraft, coupled to all these fish going past on the echo sounder there, actually do produce something. I have a feeling it might be a blank, but you never know. It could be a bonus day. Okay guys, well I'm, I've just had a take. I think I've got a bump, so either a snag or a pike. I'm right up in the weir, sort of don't know what I'm doing. Rad or roach dead bait, I can't even remember what I've got. I'm a bit of a quiver, I'm going to whack it. I'm on. Oh, and it's going to go around the anchor room. Oh, yes. Totally awesome strides again. Oh, yes. Let me grab the camera and show you before he falls off. Oh, I dropped the water. Camera in the water. There's the fish. About five pounds or so. 
So it works, Etienne's tips works on a dead bait. You can see the dead bait in his mouth there. My first Shepparton Weir Pike. Now, I'm not going to bother with it now, I'm going to try and lift this one. Anything could happen. Here we go. Oh, no, it's bigger than I thought. Bigger than I thought. Yes. Do not grab Pike without wearing gloves. He's nailed me. I can't say I blame him. Yeah. Beautiful. Just show you where I'm fishing at Shepparton Weir. There. There's the weir in the background. And there's the Pike. Ooh. He's full of fish too. Full of bait. Full of my finger. Ouch. And there is the grain pull and damage report. My fault entirely. What a good job of all those dead baits. I really don't fancy my chances with the lures. And there is a totally awesome. Ah, that's my thumb is. That's my thumb is. Please don't wiggle. Please. How stupid am I being today? It's unbelievable. That was very lucky. I'm glad he's tired out. I don't know, fish about six pounds. I'm going to try and film it going back for you. It looks like it's saved the blank. It's showing you that these metal boats do work, the aluminium boats. Well, I know that anyway, I've used them raw. But the first time out I've tried it, fishing alone, Mike couldn't come. Got a pike, hopefully, we've got something on film for you. Shows you. Get up here on the Thames, there's some good fishing. Let's get this guy back. Let's get my finger back. There he goes. Let's let him recover. Let me scoop him There he goes. Beautiful. Woohoo! Totally. Totally ouch. Totally ouch. And what had my wife put in my flask? I was suddenly seeing green parakeets everywhere. In the middle of winter. On the River Thames. And there were loads of them. What's that all about? I've lost quite a few dead baits. I don't really fancy going on lures. Let's see if we've got anything on here. Might be nothing, might just be rolling up with the other turn of weir. Can't really feel anything to be honest, there's so much water coming down. No, there's something there, something there. Yeah, fish, fish, fish. Fish. <laughs> It's a pipe. Oh, I've got the anchor rope down. I wish Mike was really, we need to get the anchor rope up. This is a better fish. This is a better fish. And where's the net? Right at the other end of the boat. I don't know if you get any of this sound. This could be a decent fish. Eight, nine pound. Oh no, it's putting me up into the weir. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. It's bad news. I don't want the bow of the weir. Oh, this is a good fish. No, this is a real big fish. It's a real good fish, this one. We're going to have to get lucky. We're going to have to get lucky to pull it into the weir. Oh, yeah. Beauty. Beauty. Woo, mama. Look at this thing. He's close to... Wow, he's got to be close to... Look, he threw out. A big eel. He's throwing an eel out there. Actually, he threw an eel out of the water. Partly digested. That is a big lunker. I'm going to have to go for the net, guys. I'm trying to hold the camera, I don't know what you're getting. It's going to power away. I'm going to go for the net, I can't risk this one. I don't know if you can see this. I'm shaking, I'm absolutely shaking. Look at the size of this. That's got to be a 20 pounder. It's mat time folks, it's totally awesome. Mat time. Woo, mama. That's how close it dragged me up to the white water of the weir. If that got me under the weir, the bow on my own, even with a life jacket, I'd have been toast. Oh, I think it's my last roach dead bait. I'll switch off and I'll get set up with a mat again. What a result. Don't think you'll get any of this, guys. I've got it in the net. I'm going to try, try and swing it in for you. God, oh, the net's going to break now. Nah, that's got to be, oh, it's over 20. Jesus! Eight! Christ! 
Let's switch the camera off, we've got to get it sorted here, boys. Let's see if I can get this weighed up. Why did mine come today? This is a chunk. He's going to go 20, I know he's going to go 20. <laughs> 20 pounds, 12 ounces. Thank you and good night. There it goes. 20 pounds, 12 ounces. And you know where that's coming from? That huge gut. That is an absolute, totally awesome pike. Pike of the season. I might be able to release it for you in the neck. Let's try that and see it swim away. Look at the tail on it. Let's get him in quick. Well, I'm going to pick the camera up because I don't want my expensive camera slimed. I've got one sardine left. I really don't fancy it on, them, on, uh, on spinners, I have to tell you. I know they catch them up here on spinners. Let's take a look at it, guys. It's recovering in the net there. Oh, camera nearly went in then. Oh, God, nearly going. Oh, yeah, he's a big fish, man. That's a big fish. Look at the width across that back. Just look at that thing. Ooh. They say there's 30s in this in this weir pool up here. I do not disbelieve it. Now, a one-handed cameraman trying to get this jet oh it's freezing. Slid gently over the top. Come on, baby. Oh got the net. Oh Jesus. I must lose the whole thing. There he's ready. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. The totally awesome fishing show strikes again. Okay, guys, that's it. Brilliant fish, 20 pounds, 12. I'll tell you what, it's time to go home. It's starting to drizzle again, the camera's getting wet. Should have put a wind muff up here. It's so noisy up here in this rushing water. So I hope you've at least seen river piking in a boat can be pretty awesome. Until next time, just keep watching the totally awesome fishing show. Mum, I want a motorbike now. Can I go on the Isle of Man TT? I wish I had a bloke with a camera, but I can't see where I'm going.